Good morning. Welcome to Milford Hills. We are so glad that you are here and in worship with us this morning on this Palm Sunday. It's a beautiful day to worship Jesus. And we are just so glad that you are here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us online this morning. My name is Vera Smith. I'm the director of Youth, Young Adult, and Children's Ministry here. Um, And before we get started with worship this morning, we just have a few announcements. If you are visiting, um, we have a restroom located on this side of the narthex. We also have a nursery for our youngest worshipers with some age-appropriate activities that they will get a lot more out of worship time. Um, And so if you need an usher to show you where the nursery is, we can do that. Um, It is Holy Week, so we are entering this Palm Sunday um, this afternoon with our Easter extravaganza. So we are very excited for the Easter egg hunt. We'll have some games and activities and, of course, the egg hunt. Um, And that starts at 4 p.m. But we will need some extra help. So if you would like to help run some of the games or lead um, an activity, if you would like to meet us in the fellowship um, hall at 3 o'clock. So we'll meet in the fellowship hall at 3 o'clock. Our youth will be helping to hide the eggs, but we could use some hands if you would like to come out to that today. Um, but invite your neighbors and friends. When you don't do that, we have a special visitor there is a special visitor. <laughs> we can come get your photos and Easter festivities. Um, and then as we enter Holy Week, um, we have our Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m. Good Friday also at 7 p.m. And then we hope that you will join us for Easter sunrise at 7 a.m. followed by breakfast together. Um, and then our traditional Easter worship at 10 o'clock. So lots this week to celebrate. Um, But as we worship together, um, we want to know that you are here. So if you can take out your cell phones, if you are visiting with us, you can text the word welcome. If you are returning, let us know if you are in person or online by texting the number 704-610-6562. But everything that we do here at Milford Hills has a mission behind it. And that is to love, serve, and live as Christ. So as we prepare to worship this morning, let us go to God in prayer. Merciful God, we are so thankful that you are here with us in this place. God, we shout Hosanna. We shout your praises this morning. We want to feel your presence. We want to feel your love so that we may share that joy with all of those in the world around us. As we enter into this holy week, Lord, we ask you to help us to center our hearts and minds. Help us to focus on you and that journey. God, we just thank you for bringing us to this place. We lift up this time to you this morning. Amen. I invite you to stand and pass the peace of Christ, and we greet those worshiping online as well. Now, if everyone would grab your palms, and if we can, stand in body or spirit and sing together, Hosanna, loud Hosanna.
invite Diane James, the uh, Chair of Staff Parish Relations Committee and avid choir member to read our first scripture today. Hear the word of God today from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2 and 19 through 29. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because his faithful love lasts forever. Let Israel say it, God's faithful love lasts forever. Open the gates of righteousness for me so I can come in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the Lord's gate. Those who are righteous enter through it. I thank you because you answered me, because you were my saving help. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation stone. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. This is the day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate in it. Lord, please save us. Lord, please let us succeed. The one who enters in the Lord's name is blessed. We bless all of you from the Lord's house. The Lord is God. He has shined a light on us. So lead the festival offering with ropes all the way to the horns of the altar. You are my God. I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will lift you up high. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good because his faithful love lasts forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. We now enter a time of prayer during our time of worship. So wherever you find yourself, may we be in a mindset and in a place where we can communicate with God during this time. I'll be heading down to the prayer rail and invite anyone else who would like to come and join me. You can come on behalf of yourself or on behalf of someone else. But let us take time to be in the presence of God. Let us pray. We come to you today, O oh God, because we are excited about what you will do this week. We cannot wait until Easter next Sunday. We cannot wait for the joy we feel in worship and the grace that pours out of every pore in our body. We cannot wait. But there's so much more that has to happen before then. We cannot have a resurrection without your suffering and death. We cannot have grace without your sacrificial love going through the process of being sacrificed. There is so much more to happen. And so we ask that you walk hand in hand with us as this week we walk hand in hand with you. Lord, thank you for being the Messiah you know we needed and not the one we thought we did. We already have a a world ravaged by war. We already have a world where the richest country in the world still has people going hungry. We already have a world that sees so much sickness, so much pain, so much suffering. We don't need a militaristic Messiah to come in and add that to pain, add to that pain and suffering. Lord, we pray for the area of the world where you walked on your own two feet. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine as the war rages in Gaza. And men, women, and children are starving to death. We pray for the families of those who went to a concert in Russia and instead died at the hands of terrorists. We pray for our country as the political lines are drawn and firmed up. May we always see each other, no matter how we vote, as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, first and foremost. As we pray for our congregation and the pain and struggles of our peop- that our people are going through, For those who have recently lost a loved one and who have been recovering from surgeries and illnesses. For all the people who do so much for our church behind the scenes and never seek recognition because they see it as a service to you, O God. For those who worship from home, from their phones at work or from their tablets at nursing homes. Lord, we thank you. 
for these people we call our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. May we continue to work together to do Your will in this place. We know others are suffering, and life has become hard for so many to handle. And so we thank You for this time where we can come and lift their names up to You as we come before You in this moment of silence. May we experience Your grace this week. May we experience Your love this week. May we experience Your Holy Spirit move in our souls and captivate them again as we walk with You through Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'd like to invite all who call themselves children to come on down for children's time. <clears throat> oh, I got me some great boys today. How are you? You doing good? Did you enjoy coming down and celebrate? Here comes Catherine. Hey, Catherine. Have you got, oh, thank you. Have you guys ever had a, your mom and dad ask you to clean up your toys or, or do something with the family? And that was kind of a, a goal that you had, wasn't it? You had to clean up your toys? Well, we're going to talk about Jesus' goal today. <clears throat> He uh, came to Jerusalem. He had been, this is a map of his country, and he had been all up in this area here doing all kinds of miracles and, and feeding people and healing people and doing all kinds of things. But he knew eventually he had to go down here to Jerusalem. So that's where he came today. And that's, mm -hmm. and they had palm trees down in Jerusalem. So that's why the people... When they had the parade, they had palm trees, didn't they? Yeah, just. He came on a donkey so that he would know that he, that he came in humble peace. But the people thought that he might come and rescue them from the mean government, the Romans that were being mean to them. But that was not his purpose. That would have been pretty easy for him but he had a harder goal that he needed to come to. And then when he came down, they sang Hosanna, which means praise the Lord or save us. And they were wanting for him to come and save them from those people. But his goal was what God had told him to do. God had told him to come and to rescue the people, not just the people in Jerusalem, but all the people, and save them not just from the Romans, but from their sin and death so that they could live forever with him and be happy. Now, isn't that wonderful news for us? That we can live with Jesus and be happy forever? That's great. So we should be glad, shouldn't we, that Jesus didn't take an easy task, but he took a, pa a painful task, but he did it anyway. And with his blood, he freed us from sin and death forever. So why don't we say a little prayer right now, okay? Will you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for your marvelous plans. Thank you for sending Jesus and giving him an uh, important purpose. Help us to trust you and remind 
us that you are near us all the time. Thank you for your love and for your forgiveness. We love you, God. And we love Jesus. Okay, Mr. Dust, lead you in a song right now. Okay, are you ready? You've been practicing, haven't you? Okay. Testing the mic. Oh, there we go. So before we sing, I wanted to share that um, the song we're doing today is called This Is The Day, and they've been working very hard in Godly Play to sing it. So we're going to do this like a call and response. So those of you who know the song, y'all do the leader part. And then for anybody else in the congregation who doesn't know, y'all just follow and do what they do. And I didn't plan it this way, but this goes along with our scripture for the psalm that was read just earlier. So that's just a God moment. Um, so that I wanted to share that as well. All right. All right. One ready, go. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Together, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Thank you all. You all can head to the nursery or back to your pews. Uh, we like to, uh, as we go to God now in a time of offering... We do have a celebration today. I want to thank everyone who gave towards the Pastoral Discretion Fund. It was just a simple email that uh, we were sending out. Uh, we had spent all the money in the restricted fund to help a family out, and so we didn't have any money in, those, uh, in that fund. And so I, I asked if you all be willing to give, and you, you, all, you all gave graciously uh, to the tune of $13,668. So uh, thank you. So thank you very much for the help that we'll be able to, uh, to provide for those uh, over the next many years. Well, now we go to God by offering our tithes and our gifts so that God can transform them to an offering to this world. And so whether you are here in the sanctuary, you're worshiping online, uh, here in the sanctuary we'll be passing the plates. But if you are here or online, you can always go to milfordhillsumc.org slash give, and you can see all the different ways that you can give to God through the ministry of this church. So let us turn our hearts now to God during the offering.
Almighty and everlasting God, as we bring our gifts and lay them at your altar, we remember the crowds in Jerusalem who laid their cloaks on the road, shouting Hosanna as Jesus passed. We know they were looking for a Messiah who was different from who you sent Jesus to be. Not one of political power and military might, but one who came in compassion and mercy to heal, love, and save. Search our hearts so that we might be confident that the Messiah for whom we long is the one you know we need. Jesus Christ, your anointed one, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we continue to stand for the reading of the Word of God today. It comes out of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Here now the Word of God. When Jesus and his followers approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus gave two disciples a task, saying to them, Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter it, you will find tied up there a colt that no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, Its master needs it, and he will send it back right away. They went and found a colt tied to a gate outside the street, and they untied it. Some people standing around said to them, "Why? What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them just what Jesus said, and they left them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes upon it, and he sat upon it. Many people spread their clothes on the road, while others spread branches cut from the fields. Those in front of him and those following were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed on, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. After he looked around at everything, because it was already late in the evening, he returned to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills that we may serve you today, now, and always. Amen. A few weeks ago, I had the privilege of, or we as a family, had a privilege of taking Dean to Western Carolina University to check out their campus. It's Alicia's alma mater. We had a great campus tour, and it was amazing to see the growth of the school since uh, Alicia graduated from there. The dorms that she stayed in, they no longer exist. New ones that kind of look like designer mountain retreat centers now are in their place. But for Alicia and I, brought back lots of memories from our college years as we walked around. We shared stories with our kids, whether they cared or not. What it was like back in our day, back in the 1900s, walking this campus. It was a great great trip down memory lane. Alicia and I started to date my senior year, her junior year of high school. And so by the time she got to Western, I was at Montreat College, which was exactly about 58 and a half minutes away. So we had been dating a couple of years. Back then, you know, we didn't have cell phones, and so I had a calling card that I would call to make uh, long-distance calls to her, and I had memorized the 16 digits of that card and plus the seven of her phone number, and I could dial that all about three seconds to get a hold of her. But we would talk every, a few times a week, and back then, we would do the common silly things that all teenagers heavily in love would do, like, no, you, you hang up first. But I wonder what kids these days do as they are falling madly in love with one another. Are they texting and saying, no, you stop texting. No, you stop Snapchatting. But no matter how we communicate, whether it's through a long-distance phone card or through Snapchat, these days we do the same thing. As people fall in love, they do silly things. And they continue to make that person that they are falling in love with the focus above all else. I'm sure you could look back at your life and when you fell in love and think about all the silly things you did. 
But falling in love is an amazing moment in people's lives. It's exciting, it's, it's thrilling, it's exhilarating. It can consume your entire life. And all of a sudden, the only person that you think about is the one that you've fallen in love with. The world revolves around that person. Now the funny thing is, is that we think falling in love is all about the other person. But in reality, it's all about us. When we fall in love, we love the feelings that we have within ourselves and the feelings that this new person brings out in us. The process of falling in love says that this other person makes me feel good. This person brings something out of me that I, I never knew existed. Falling in love says that when I am with this person, I can't believe how I feel. It's about me, myself, and I. Yet, at, yet it is a very superficial love. Falling in love is a shallow idea of love. Falling in love is not the same as just love. Walter Wangerin is a Lutheran pastor who wrote a book on marriage. And in that book he says this, Love lies a little. Love, the desire to like and be liked, feels so good when it's satisfied that it, can never want, that it never wants to stop. Therefore, love edits the facts in order to continue to feel good. When falling in love, that process, we focus on the self and we get those love goggles on because we cannot see reality that we are surrounded by. That, I mean, others can see it. Friends can see another one in a relationship and wonder, well, I wonder how long that's going to last. They will see the other and they'll see the damage and the change it has on that person's life. But when you're neck deep falling in love, you can't see it. Rarely do you have that perspective. Our heart tells us little lies. Oh, it's cute how jealous he gets. He really loves me. Not the fact that he has issues with control. Oh, I think it's just so wonderful. She checks up on me so many times during the day. Not that she has trust issues. But all these little lies fail into comparison to the biggest ones so many of us tell ourselves. I know I can change him. Oh, I know I can change her. Falling in love likes to make us believe that line, hook, line, and sink. But falling in love is not love. Today is Palm Sunday. It is the star of Holy Week, the holiest week of the Christian year. It is the week that we celebrate. We wave palms today as Jesus rides into Jerusalem. There is so much hope and joy on this Sunday. We try and re-invoke that, that feeling on the road in Jerusalem by handing out palms and having our children parade around the sanctuary and our choir sing beautiful music. We celebrate that Jesus is going into the holy city because we know this arrival changes the world. On that road, there were a lot of people who were falling in love with Jesus. They love the idea that Jesus was the Messiah. They love the idea that a revolution was about to start. They love the idea that Jewish people had been under so much, the rule of so many other governments that now the Messiah, God's Son, was coming to free them for good. They were falling in love with the idea of this Messiah. But their eyes were covered with love goggles that blinded them to the reality of who Jesus truly was. But as they laid their cloaks on the ground, as they laid the palm branches down and the donkey trampled over them, they knew they could change him. Or at least that's the lie their hearts were telling themselves. You see, people on the side of the road had this idea of who Jesus was. They had an idea of who they wanted Jesus of Nazareth to be. They wanted a superhero type of Messiah. They wanted a Thor, an Iron Man, a Hulk, Captain America all the other Avengers wrapped up into one. They had this idea that Jesus would pick up a sword and cut the heart out of Caesar and the Roman government, release the captives and set them free to be their own country, God's nation once again. This is the person they laid the branches down for. 
and their cloaks down for. This is the person who they were falling in love with. This is the person that Peter falls in love with on the Mount of Transfiguration. He's there on the mountain and withstanding the presence of Jesus, unveiling his divine side, and he said, this is a good place to be. Let's put up some tents and stay here forever. This is a comment of a teenager who is falling head over heels in love but doesn't understand reality. Then in a blink of an eye, it was just him, James, John, and Jesus again, and they started to head back down the mountain. When the religious authorities approached Judas, they spoke to a man falling in love with Jesus. Judas was a zealot, which means he had great passion for his cause. He was following Jesus because he knew Jesus was going to change the world. He had all the right ideas, but he's falling in love with Jesus, and that process blinded him. He thought in his head, I can change him. He thought he could force his hand and make Jesus choose to toss the religious leaders out who held their faith captive by their rules and regulations. Jesus was going to get rid of the Romans who were choking his people. Jesus was going to do all of this. All he needed, all he needed was just a little push. So 30 pieces of silver was all he needed to betray Jesus. And he sold them out. Now we may not be Judas. Or Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration. Or the people on the road who saw Jesus ride by. But we have our false ideas of who Jesus is. Our falling in love with Jesus has blinded us to the true reality of God's Son, Jesus the Christ. And it is deep in our hearts that we look at Christ and we think, I can still change him. In a blog post entitled, Why Falling in Love May Be Sort of a Myth, the author writes that there comes a point when love moves beyond falling in love. After the arguments, after the struggles, after life settles in, there's only one way to continue. The author writes, the only way to rise to the challenge of love is to rise and serve. Another way to put it is, falling in love is an emotion, and love is an action. Jesus headed into Jerusalem to show us what God's love looks like, and it wasn't what we expected. It was heading that way when he threw everyone out of the temple, and by the end of the week, things were going to be, or were not going like people thought, and they decided they really wanted to change him. Even though on numerous occasions he told his disciples that the Son of Man would have to be lifted up. He told them he was going into Jerusalem and he's going to suffer and die and rise again on the third day, but their falling in love goggles blinded them to that reality. Yet Jesus doesn't do what we want. He does what we need. You see, when you move from falling in love to love, it moves the focus from yourself to someone else. When I was falling in love with Alicia, I was focused on how that made me feel. But now, 30 years later, I show love by rising and serving. I show love by honoring and serving her. It isn't about me anymore. It is about her. Falling in love is, a sentiment, is sentimental. But God's love is sacrificial. And when we fall in love with God, we are focused on what God's love does to us and for us. But then as we grow, we live out God's love by focusing more on how we can honor and serve God. Jesus shows us how to do that this week. His love for us leads, us, leads him to the cross on Friday. His suffering, death, and his sacrifice are all about his love for us. Those who have a shallow or cheap love for God are the ones who are in the crowd waving palms and laying their cloaks on the ground on Sunday and then on Friday they're in the same crowd yelling, crucify him, because Jesus isn't doing what they want. If we let the love of God wash over us, transform us, and mold us into his likeness, then we can learn to love like God. 
In my 20 plus years of ministry, I have seen people do this. I have seen it in the love of a daughter has for her mother. And that as her mother is dying, she crawls into bed with her and holds her. And although she hasn't been able to recognize her in months because of the the disease that has claimed her mind, she holds her tight in her last moments. I've seen it on the faces of a mother and father who have to decide to pull their 17-year-old off of life support and to donate her organs. I've seen it with a husband who is holding the hand of his wife who is coming to grips with being paralyzed from the waist down. I've seen it in the eyes of parents who were holding their two-pound baby, wondering if she would survive, and only a few months later, passing her to me to baptize. You see, God's love can infect us deeply if we let it. We can move past the lies of falling in love tells us if we start to love like God and not hope God can be made into something that we desire. Instead of thinking that we can change God, how about we just let God change us? This Holy Week, that is my hope. That is my prayer. That you will open yourself up to that chance. Please don't jump from today to Easter Sunday. Please join us on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. Please go take the Stations of the Crosswalk out in our own field. It can be heavy. It can be deep. It can be moving. Yet that is when the reality of God's love sets in. And on Easter morning, God's grace will just flow. If you skip through from the party today to the party next Sunday, you'll miss on the sacrificial love of God. The true love. True love that shows up as a four-year-old who sees his elderly neighbor crying. The man just lost his wife. And seeing the man cry, the little boy walks over to the older man's yard, climbs into her lap, his lap, and just sits there. And when the mother asked what he said to his neighbor, the little boy said, nothing. I just helped him cry. That, that is God's love. And so as we start this week, may we be transformed by God's love found in Jesus Christ. May we be moved beyond falling in love with God to understanding and living out the love of God in everything we do and in all the ways we are who we are. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for being you and not being the God of our own design and our own desires. And so as we walk with you hand in hand this week, maybe for the first time, May we be transformed by the gifts we receive today as you enter Jerusalem for the grace that is found in the last meal in the upper room. Witnessing the travel from light light to darkness on Good Friday and to come to the tomb together on Easter morning. Lord, may we feel your love within our hearts. And may we move beyond just simply falling in love with you to actually being your love in this world. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now as a response to God's word, let us confess what it is that we believe which is found in the Apostles' Creed. May we stand together. We say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. And now, in body or spirit, let us continue to stand and sing together When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. <laughs>
Just a reminder, as we head into this Holy Week, there are a lot of things to do. Come out today at 4 o'clock for the Easter extravaganza. There will be an ice cream truck. So come and join and, uh, and bring the neighbors and, and come out and have some fun. Monday, Thursday at 7 o'clock, we'll have worship here in the sanctuary. Same with Good Friday, where our confirmands will be helping us through that service of Tenenbrae or service of darkness. If you are a reader, if you don't mind wearing black that night, we would greatly appreciate it. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll have a sunrise uh, service with a potluck breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it'll be in our courtyard, so just come and we'll, have, uh, we'll pull out some chairs, or if you want to bring your own chair, you're more than welcome to. And then Easter worship will be happening here in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock on Sunday. During this week and next week, we have Stations of the Cross in our field. If you go out to the parking lot and look at the stairs going down to the uh, playground, that's where it starts. There's a QR code you can scan and it'll guide you through the, through the walk where you can read scriptures with it. it is, uh, those pieces of art are done by people on death row in Tennessee. Some of them have already been executed since it happened back in 2022. And so uh, it takes some time to go through that and kind of reflect on uh, the Stations of the Cross, Jesus' execution by those who would be hanging next to him on uh, Friday. So here now this benediction. As we go into this week, may we be transformed by the love of God. May we not just be falling in love with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but may we offer the love of God to the world. Go in peace. Amen.